Morning sickness is one of the most common symptoms of pregnancy, but in some cases, severe nausea and vomiting called hyperemesis gravidarum can turn a pregnancy into a fight for survival. I was admitted into Loma Linda University Hospital. I haven't eaten or drank anything in five days. I've lost 10 pounds. This is gonna be my last pregnancy. I can't do this anymore. I'm gonna do a video diary to show just what a hyperlipid is. I just went to go to the bathroom and didn't make it. Pregnancy is supposed to be exciting. There's nothing exciting about feeling like you're gonna die. I'm supposed to be okay with this. I'm supposed to be like, this is how it is. Oh. Oh. Uh. No, this isn't okay. My throat is starting to hurt from throwing up so much. I take it day by day and know that through everything that I've gone through, we will be able to help other women and other families to be able to successfully have their babies with hyperemesis gravidarum. That was Vanessa who chronicled her battle with hyperemesis during her pregnancy. Vanessa, thank you for joining yeah. us. And I... I'm sorry, you have to go through such a hard experience. But, but look at what a beautiful thing you brought into the world. And um, you are just a, a brave, brave mommy to thank go you. through that for your son. Yeah. 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 And, well, you chronicled that because you've had eight failed pregnancies because of your unique circumstances with this, with hyperemesis. Yes. And most of the time, you know, nausea and vomiting in pregnancy is very common mm -hmm. and very mild and just, you know, waylaid with a few crackers and saltines. I mean, most of us moms remember that. And, you know, from nausea and vomiting to not being able to hold any food down, that's where hyperemesis gravidarum comes in. When you, you're unable to hold food down or any liquids at all, when you're starting to get dehydrated, um, and we show this by changes in postural blood pressure and pulse, um, by skin turgor, and, you know, these things can happen where we actually have to hospitalize women because Absolutely. outpatient things like ginger, I mean, you've all heard in pregnancy, you take your ginger, ginger tea. Um, there's also the, the bands that you can use to press on the acupressure point to try and help with nausea. Lots of different things. Um, and, didn't and, work for you, no. huh? Yeah, I lots of times everything. it doesn't work. And then we move to prescription medications, so I like the antiemetics. And there's, you know, the oral antiemetics that we can give you and then if those don't work, then we try. Then we admit you to the hospital, and we'll try those by the IV. And if those don't work, then there's actually, I mean, this is how severe it can get. Um, we actually will give uh, steroids, methylprednisolone, to, um, to try and help with these things. So there's a lot of different avenues that we try um, before we get to the point where you oh. actually had to have tube feeding. Um, and that's, wow. ex again, very, very rare and very extreme for hyperemesis, but that's how bad it can get. Usually we try and at least get woman, women from the hospital to home so that they can, you know, get to the point where they'll get past it and cont continue through the pregnancy. And there's a lot of home services that will do pumps and things like that with anti-nausea medi medications so that women don't have to stay in the hospital for prolonged periods of time. But again, you had, you were the champion of the champion because she had the worst of the worst of hyperemesis gravidarum. 